the moon. Isn't that a pretty exciting, interesting topic? Yeah. Let's get uh, t uh, tackling this subject. To terraform any planet or moon, you need three things, oxygen, water, and food. To To get oxygen from the moon, you, you need to mine the lunar regolith, which is about 40% oxygen. Yeah, you might be thinking I'm lying, but it's true. It's actually 40% oxygen. And you might be thinking, how do you extract the oxygen from the regolith? Well, it's actually a surprisingly easy, uh, simple process. Is called electrolysis. It uses electricity to do a chemical reaction, like separating the oxygen from the regolith. First, we need to apply uh, electric current to the oxygen, but the moon rocks aren't really conductive, so the key is to add a material called an electrolyte to help the electricity flow. Do you know what an electrolyte is? No. Can well, you tell me? Yeah, I'll tell you. An electrolyte is a material that electricity flows through easily. And the, we can use calcium chloride for the electrolyte. Now, after the mixture is ready, heat the mixture to 950 degrees Celsius. which is hot enough to melt the calcium chloride electrolyte, but not hot enough that it melts the regolith. After the, everything is at the right temperature, then you need to apply the electric current that starts the process of breaking the oxygen atoms free. In about a day, 75% of the oxygen atoms will be free, and about a third of, it will, a third of which will be in a form suitable for breathing, which is the gaseous state. You guys must be thinking, isn't that not enough for NASA astronauts? Well, it is, because NASA astronauts aboard the ISS consume an average of just 840 grams of oxygen per day. That is very little. Compared to the oxygen being released from lunar regolith. Now, let's talk about water. How are we going to get water from the moon? You guys m might be thinking that there's no water on the moon, but... If you guys think that, you guys are wrong, because in the moon's uh, north and south poles, and on the crater of the moon, there is water ice deposits. There can be billions of tons of water ice in there, which you can mine, melt into liquid form, purify it, and then drink it. Wow. And, that could, and also we can experiment with plants and animals for food. Right? Isn't that cool? You can actually you can actually get water from the moon. You can get it from lunar craters. Like you know, cr those lunar craters they're very dark, so sunlight never reaches there, and it never destroys the water in there. So what's the other step of terraforming the moon? Well, the other step is that how do we get energy to power our base? Now, to get energy, we can mine helium dream from the moon. Since the moon has no atmosphere, the moon does not have protection from the solar wind. And thus, the solar wind pushes a lot of helium tree onto the moon's surface. We can mine it, fuse it, and create fusion energy, a type of eco-friendly energy which could solve the energy crisis on Earth and also power our base. First of all, how are we even going to make this base? What materials is the base going to be made of? Well, NASA and the ESA, the European Space Agency, are thinking of a plan that they should make inflatable habitats. Basically, like a balloon with all the stuff astronauts need to survive on the moon. And leave it there for a couple of years for astronauts to do research. And create a permanent presence, a permanent human presence on the moon. Oh. Isn't that pretty?
pretty cool. Would you want to go there? Well, when the colony is ready, uh, I'm sure. Not not when it's just beginning. <laughs> when you the don't want to be a pioneer? Like, you don't want to be a pioneer? Because pioneers have the all, all the work done. I'll go when the colony is like a full-fledged Earth colony, like New York City. Or some town or something on the moon that they have like complex regions and stuff. And mommy, let me tell you the phases of terraforming. Phase one, people go to the moon. This phase was completed when NASA astronauts landed on the moon. And phase one is where you create a temporary base on the moon, which we already did. The lunar lander was a temporary base on the moon, but they didn't stay there. They abandoned the temporary base. Now, this is the phase that I really want to happen very soon. Phase two. Phase two is where you create a, t a temporary base on the moon, but not so temporary that it's a few days. Temporary like a few years where you can gather knowledge about the moon and take lunar samples and gather knowledge about the moon and the area you're living in the moon and also learn how to survive there and use the resources on the moon to your advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, there's one phase that we might even never go to, phase three, where you completely tear from the moon and the moon come, becomes a full-fledged uh, full colony that's self-sufficient and doesn't need resources from Earth. This may be in 50 to 60 years from now, phase three. Phase two is just about a decade from now, or if we want to, it could be even right now. They, NASA says that if we wanted to, all the space agencies keeping up, it would just cost five to ten billion dollars. Not much compared to the GDP of the world, which is a lot, like trillions of dollars. Five bill that just costs five billion dollars, and it would take about five to ten years. Mm -hmm. Not that big of an investment. Mm -hmm. Now the reason you know why we're not doing the colony right now? Why? Because NASA and all these other space agencies don't think they're ready for it right now. You know how we're, uh, but do you know how we might start a hu permanent human presence on the moon? How? NASA's Artemis 1 mission will s send an uncrewed uh, test flight for a SLS, the Space Flight System of NASA, to the moon. And it will test a lunar rocket, which will resemble a new path to the moon. a quicker path to the moon. And after Artemis 1, on the mission Artemis 2, in about two years from now, we will send humans to the moon again, and maybe even put a base on the moon at then. Mm -hmm. Sound pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone, don't get your ho hopes up because, well, we're not making a base on the moon so soon, but we will still make a base on the moon. Many space agencies are making plans for that. Everyone, if you want to see more cool science videos, please visit www.funtimelab.com. And I'll see you soon in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.